Well, when Dan uh, contacted me about uh, having this meeting, you know, um, it's always a little leery when you have to talk about this issue that Dan's done for his entire life and I've done for about a year. So, um, I don't claim to be a health professional, nor do I claim to have all the answers. I thought tonight, um, when I was preparing for this, that what I would do is pull together um, information that I have from Republican caucus members who have been working on this issue since last session. And uh, as Dan said, uh, we probably won't address this issue this year. Um, even the people who voted for the state exchange don't want to address this issue. And um, I brought up even working on the reform of Medicaid because that seems to be where we have to head first. And I think there's support for that on both sides of the aisle. But um, I've told, been told that that won't happen either. Um, so I'm going to share some information that I have. Um, collected here uh, in the last six, seven months and uh, to help you understand what the Republican caucus is thinking and why. A lot of this information um, comes out of the Milliman report that um, was produced for the state of Idaho and it's available online. I can give you that address later if you'd like it. Some of it comes from the Heritage Foundation and some of it comes from the Goldwater Institute. At any rate, let me um, share with you. Um, Medicaid is a federal program created in 1965 without a direct funding source. Idaho manages that program uh, with federally mandated criteria. Medicaid is currently financed with 70% federal and 30% um, from Idaho state general tax dollars. Over 40% of all federal Medicaid dollars are borrowed. And as an entitlement, the costs increase automatically. On the other hand, Social Security has FICA SSDI tax as a dedicated funding source, and Medicare also has the FICA SSHI tax as a dedicated federal funding source. Idaho presently spends significant general tax dollars on Medicaid. This fiscal year, FY 2014, 17.2% of the Idaho general budget, or $0.47 billion has been appropriated for Medicaid. That's in addition to $0.02 billion in dedicated funds and $1.3 billion in federal funds. The total increase in Idaho Medicaid appropriations has averaged 9.9% .9 a year since 1997. Uh, what is the cost of Medicaid expansion? The Kaiser Family Foundation and the Heritage Foundation report that on net, Medicaid expansion will increase Idaho Medicaid expenditures by 2.2% or an estimated $149 million through 2022 was a 10 year study. Uh, based on the FY 2014 Medicaid uh, fiscal year, uh, there is a $2 billion budget and every 1% increase in the total Medicaid cost will increase the annual state Medicaid payment by $20 million. In 2013, Milliman, an independent actuarial consulting company, prepared an analysis of Medicaid expansion in Idaho for the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare. Although a full economic impact to the state is beyond the scope of this analysis, we project a total state and federal increased spending in Idaho of $9.2 billion over the state fiscal years 2014 to 2024, per the report. Federal Medicaid assistance percentage, federal medical assistance percentage, oh, I gotta read that three times. Federal Medicaid assistance percentage, that's called FMAP. Rates are used in determining the amount of federal matching funds for state expenditures on certain social services and state medical insurance expenditures. The formula for FMAP rates is outlined in section 1905B of the Social Security Act. The Milliman report lists the assumed FMAP rates by year and population and shows that Idaho FMAP rates will continue at the enhanced rates of 90% through 2024. However, given the federal deficit and a possible willingness or unwillingness in Congress to respond, questions persist about the ability of the federal government to sustain this favorable expansion FMAP rate in perpetuity. And that concern uh, relates to the fact that we're sitting at a $17 trillion deficit. That's very real. So whether or not they can continue to fund it at that is, is one of the biggest questions uh, many of my caucus members have. 
Indeed, Milliman states a decrease from the assumed 90% expansion FMAP down to the assumed 70% for the current Medicaid population would result in an increased Idaho cost of $184.81 million in FY 2024 alone. This is using 2014 numbers allowing for no increase. In short, the enhanced FMAP rate may not be secure and states will be hard pressed to back the federal funds in the event of future cuts. <laughs> the Milliman report also states that in addition to the expenditures associated with providing medical service to the expanded population, the state of Idaho will incur additional administrative costs at 3.5% of the total expected medical expenditures for the population-based ACA changes. So not, none of the administrative costs related to the Medicaid expansion are covered. That's what I've been told. Uh, Furthermore, administrative costs are not um, identified in this law and uh, they won't receive the 90% match. Medicaid expansion will either divert resources away from other essential <coughs> items programs or require tax increases. None of those are very acceptable. Um, as the Kaiser Report states, even small incremental costs are a factor that must be considered by states with limited resources. Depending on how it applies the law, HHS, can, HHS, Health and Human Services, can change enrollment by just adjusting eligibility criteria. One example is the interpretation and application of the Modified Adjusted Gross Income, or the MAGI, uh, requirements in the ACA. If future interpretations lead to increased caseloads, increased costs are likely to follow. Idaho must have a balanced budget by law, and increases in entitlement programs such as Medicaid will divert resources from other programs. We already see this occurring today, and according to the Idaho Legislative Fiscal Report, from FY 1993 to FY 2014, the percentage of the general fund appropriation for health and welfare increased by over 6%, while the total appropriation for education decreased by 10%. Healthcare costs have continued to escalate dramatically in the past few years. The average cost of privately insured population under 65 in the Boise area rose an average of 11.3% per year between 2008 and 2010. The national average is 8.2% and the state of Idaho was 7.9. These hospital costs have an adverse effect not only on individuals but everything in the system including the cost of insurance and government health programs. The Milliman Report also indicates that Medicaid expansion will leave some Idahoans without health care. Administrative and health care responsibilities will continue in order to meet the health care needs of that group. We must find a way to provide that care within acceptable spending limits. One way to might be to move this financial obligation to a capped state fund to be used for items such as incentives for personal accountability, medical savings accounts, managed care, or shared cost based on outcomes. All the requirements of the ACA will place increased pressure upon Idaho's very limited health care delivery system. According to an Idaho Department of Labor white paper, Idaho is currently either at the bottom or very close to the bottom among the states in the number of health care providers per capita. The increased pressure on a very limited medical service force could be devastating to the availability of doctors, particularly in small <coughs> rural Idaho communities. The access issues resulting from expanded Medicaid could result in excessive ER visits that could translate into increased costs for everyone, both public and private. We must use our collective knowledge and experience to find an Idaho, non-federal, state-based approach to the critical health care issues facing our citizens. Some of the alternatives being discussed in addition to those mentioned earlier to help Idaho address the myriad of health care issues are tying the Medicaid growth to the general fund growth, increase the patient deductible for wrongful use of an emergency room, determine a fixed payment per patient per service dollar amount, create incentives for less costly care, increase access to non-institutional services, increase use of managed care and encourage mid-level practitioners such as um, nurse practitioners or physician assistants, medical savings accounts and insurance premium assistance. Any solution must include the education of our citizens 
and it must address the exponentially increasing healthcare costs and must contain a market-based individual responsibility component. I think I'll stop there. <laughs> That's plenty to digest.